Hello everyone, happy to see you here, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to solve a really interesting cubic equation. We have x squared minus x cubed equal to 2, and we need to find our x. If you have your solution, your answer, your approach, you can also write your solution down into the comment section, and then we will check our answers. Okay, so first of all, let's subtract 2 from both sides. As a result, what do we have? We have on the left side, we have x squared minus x cubed. And of course, we're going to get this minus 2 from the right side. So we have minus 2 equal to 0. And if you look closely, this is cubic equation, but we prefer a little bit different order. Yeah, on the first side, it looks like that we need to find x cubed, then minus x squared, then minus 2. But in this case, let's write instead of this 2, let's write 1 plus 1. Okay, so instead of this 2, let's write really interesting expression. So let's write 1 plus 1. 1. Instead of 2, we're going to write 1 plus 1 equal to 0. And of course, the same beginning. So as a result, we have x squared in the beginning, minus x cubed, and minus, we have instead of 2, we have 1 plus 1. Right now, what we're going to do, we're going to open our parentheses with this minus sign in the beginning. So we need to change all the signs. So as a result, we have x squared minus x cubed minus 1 and of course, minus 1 equal to 0 equal to zero. Okay, so I really hope you understand. First of all, subtraction 2 from both sides. The next thing we write, instead of 2, we're going to write 1 plus 1 and open our parentheses. So I think everything is, is clear. Right now, instead of this one right here, I'm going to change this to 1 square. 1 square equal to 1, so this one we can easily change by 1 square. This one right here, we can easily change by 1 cube. 1 cube is the same, the same one. So instead of this one, we're going to write 1 square. Instead of this one, we're going to write 1 cube. So let's do this right now. As a result, we have x square minus x cube minus 1 square and minus 1 1 cube. And right now, very tricky moment because we're going to group our squares. So as a result, we have x square right here and 1 square. So we're going to group these two squares and we're going to group these cubes. So I'm going to write it with this line. So we're going to group these, these two cubes. Let's do this right now. First of all, in our first parentheses, we will have x square minus 1 square. Okay, so x square minus 1 square. So these are the first parentheses. In the second parentheses we will have minus and in the second we will have x cubed but with the plus sign because we have parentheses. So we have x cubed plus 1 cube. When we open parentheses, we will have absolutely the same thing that we have right here at this place. Okay, right now if we look closely, in this moment we have difference of two squares and as a result we can easily remember a formula from school. This is our a square minus b square or x square minus y square. If we're talking about x and y, this is equal to x plus y, x plus y and x minus y. This is our first formula. But right here, uh, this part on the right side, we have different, we have the sum of two cubes. And of course, we can easily remember that formula as well. As a result, we have x cubed plus y cubed. Okay, as a result, what do we get from here? We have x plus y, x plus y. And in another parentheses, we'll have x square minus xy and plus y square. So first of all, let's apply difference of squares right here and let's apply the sum of two cubes right here at this place. So as a result, what do we have? We have the first parentheses x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1, x minus 1, and the next thing we're going to have minus, we have x plus 1, yeah, x plus 1, and in another parentheses we have x square minus x and plus 1 equal to 0. So as you can see, we factor our question, we factor our two parts. This part we factor right here in according to our identity and this one we factor according to our sum of two cubes. Right now, x plus 1 right here and x plus 1 right here. So we can easily factor our x, x plus 1. So as a result, what do we get from here? We have x plus 1 at this place, x plus 1. And in parentheses, we will have x minus 1, x minus 1. I'm going to take it inside parentheses and minus this one minus this parentheses, x square minus x and plus 1 equal to equal to 0. Right now let's simplify this. Of course we can easily find real quick our first root, but let's simplify our right parentheses on the right side. So we have x plus 1 right here. And on the right side, what do we get? We get x, x minus 1, x minus 1, minus x square plus x and minus minus 1 equal to equal to 0. Right now let's simplify this real quick. Our parentheses on the right side. So we have x plus 1 right here and on our parentheses we'll have minus x square. Let's start with it. Minus x square. What about x? We have x and x. We have 2x so plus 2x 
And the next thing, what are we going to do? We're going to minus 1, subtract minus 1. So as a result, we have minus 2. And of course, equal to equal to 0. Right now, let's uh, solve our, our question. Because a product of two parentheses equal to 0, when the first parenthesis equal to 0, so x plus 1 equal to 0, or the second parenthesis equal to 0, minus x squared plus 2x, and minus 2, minus 2, equal to, equal to 0. So we have two cases. The first one, so we're going to write it here, or, so the first case and the second case. We're going to, we can easily solve real quick our first equation, because from here, x first is equal to minus, minus 1. Yeah, this is our first, first root. We're going to check it a little bit later. So this is our first root. And right now, let's solve our second quadratic equation. First of all, we're going to multiply both sides by minus 1, because we need a positive sign right here, so we need a classic quadratic equation with the positive sign near this x square, and near the second power, so we have x square minus 2x and plus 2 equal to 0. With the basic method of coefficients, we can easily solve it. We have a equal to 1, b equal to minus 2 and c equal to equal to 2. We can easily find real quick of a discriminant uh, discriminant to this question. We can easily find it. Mm, let's do this. So we have b square minus 4ac. Okay, as a result, what do we have? b square. We have minus 2 square. b square minus 4 times a times 1 and times c times times 2. As a result of a discriminant is equal to we have 4 minus right here we have 8. So our discriminant is negative, so we have minus 4. Doesn't matter, right here we have, uh, we're going to have complex root, so doesn't matter. So as a result, our x second and third is equal to, we have minus b plus minus square root of discriminant and all over, all over to a. Let's plug in all of this, each of these elements into this stuff. So we have minus b, we have minus minus 2 plus minus square root of discriminant, square root of minus 4 and all over 2 times 2 times 1. As a result, what do we have? We have minus minus, we have plus right here at this place, so we have 2 plus minus square root of minus 4. We can easily split it, or oh, first of all, let's write it as minus 1 times 4. Let's write something like that, and all over, all over 2. As a result, this is equal to, we have 2 plus minus, and according to a basic uh, square root uh, property, we can easily split it, like when we have, of course, multiplication, not addition, subtraction, but multiplication, we can easily split it like square root of minus 1 times square root of square root of 4, and we divide it by by 2. This square root of minus 1, this is our complex unit, this is our imaginary unit, this is our i, and square root of 4 equal to 2. So as a result, we have 2 plus minus 2i, and all over all over 2. And the final move, let's split it by a real part and imaginary part. For this, we can divide our numerator by 2. So we can divide 2 over 2 and plus minus 2i over 2. As a result, we can cancel all of these 2 from both sides. And we have 1 plus minus 1 plus minus i. And it looks like this is our answer to our question. So first of all, let's write our uh, final answer to our question, and then we can easily check real quick, for example, our x first equal to uh, equal to 1. Let's write our final answer, for example, right here at this place. So our answer, our answer to this question. So x first equal to minus 1, x second equal to, let's start with the plus sign, 1 plus i, and x third is equal to 1 minus minus i. These two roots are complex root. This one root is real number, real number root. And this is my answer to this question. Let's check it real quick. First of all, I'm going to rewrite real quick uh, our question. So we have x square minus x cube equal to equal to 2. Let's check real quick our x first equal to 1, for example. So we have prove, we have check x first equal to minus 1. As a result, what do we have? We have minus 1 square, minus 1 square, minus minus 1 cube equal to equal to 2. Minus 1 square equal to 1, and we have minus, because we have right here odd power, so it's not even power, so it means that we have right here minus 1 times minus 1, so mm, I can easily write it right here real quick. So we have minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1, as a result, of course, right here, at this, when we multiply these two elements, we have a positive sign, but when we multiply by negative, because we still have this minus 1, because we have 3, 3 minus 1, so of course we have 1, 2, 3, so as a result, we have minus 1, because of, because of odd power, and equal 
equal to 2. Of course, minus minus is plus. So we have 1 plus 1 equal to equal to 2. So as a result, our root is, is great. As you can see, we can easily check it. So it was my solution to this question. Right now we can see a graph. You can see these points of intersection. You can see this uh, like from geometric perspective. It's also really great to see this question from another perspective. And I really hope you understand it. I really hope you learned something new. You can also write your question down into the comment section. What do you think about this type of question? It's really interesting to exchange information. It's also really interesting to see you respond. What do you think about this type of question? And of course, if you have your solution, you can also share your solution down into the comment section. It's really great. It's really great to see your approach. It's also really interesting for everyone, I guess, yeah? So thank you everyone for your time. Wish all the best in your life. Take care of yourself and see you in the next videos. Have a great day.